there is a blueprint for health. Nobody in medicine or very few people are care or concerned about what is normal and what is healthy. And if you don't understand what is normal and what is healthy, and all you understand is the illness and pathology and how to fix it with synthetics, you are in the wrong forest. All right, listeners, what's up? Welcome to The Healing Reset, a health podcast aimed at providing hope and your body's ability to heal and maintain health. Contrary to today's belief, you are amazing. You're designed to heal. I'm Jess, your host. Today, our topic is geared towards those of you who want to get off your monthly prescriptions. Maybe you don't know how. Maybe you're scared. Maybe you're just uncertain on what that looks like. So um, listen up. Here's some data I pulled. Average number of prescriptions in America, four. CDC data says that 69% of people above 40 take at least one prescription medicine, just goes up with age. Now, as always, we aren't here to create a system of shame, but we're here to talk about a picture that can give you, our listeners, access to healing beyond what medications can offer. Again, your body is designed for balance. Here to talk to us today is Dr. Soren. He's cool, guys, but beyond being cool, He's crazy intelligent. I've listened to quite a bit of his stuff. He has his own radio show. But until we get into more of that, Dr. Soren, welcome to the show. Thank you. It is a pleasure and it is an honor to be here with you. And everything you said is right on target. Perfect. Thank you for thank you for that. Commonly, people do come to you to try to get off medications, no? Yes. Uh, uh, I'll give you some numbers if you like. Uh, then there's statistics, and then there is other stuff. We have over 36,000 successful outcomes where conventional has failed. And one of the major, one of the most common things that people come to us is literally, simply, how do I get off my drugs? But this takes, this is a superficial layer. Getting off the drugs is not that difficult if you do all the right things and if, if you approach it from the right perspective. And I'll talk about that. Now you say 36,000 where convention has failed. So that's people going to conventional medicine, quote unquote, modern day medicine. It hasn't worked for them. They're frustrated, whatever that roadblock looks like. Then they come to you 36,000. Yes. This is a, a track record started by my medical partner, Dr. Norm Shealy, who is the founding father of holistic medicine. And uh, we can talk about Dr. Shealy and his work because this is actually instrumental and critical to what we're doing here right now in continuation of his legacy. We're talking about a concept of holism, and we're talking about a uh, the matrix uh, of the healthcare system. And if you've seen the movie Matrix, or if you're familiar with the movie Matrix, I actually did a radio recording where I literally uh, talked about the healthcare system, or what we call the healthcare system, which it really is sick care system. There's a huge distinction there. You say sick care system. I have, we've talked about this on the show before, how it's just management. It's like management of disease versus healing versus finding that way to disconnect from a diagnosis and heal. And is that kind of where you're talking about a sick system? That's exactly it. But technically I am certified in family medicine. I've been working emergency room for over 20 years. I have uh, a lot of experience in various uh, administrative and otherwise capacities. I've served as a medical director at a number of places, including the VA, uh, but as well as others. Uh, I've had my own wellness centers uh, for quite a while. And uh, actually, the culmination of the experience came uh, in 2015. Uh, and that's when I actually met and I was uh, invited to join Dr. Norm Shealy, the founding father of holistic medicine. Uh, now, the interesting thing about Dr. Shealy is that he's at this point uh, 89 years old. And uh, back in the 60s and 70s, he has done some major work. Uh, Dr. Norm C. Shealy is a famous neurosurgeon. He is the man who actually who is, uh, who created the idea and the concept uh, of the TENS uh, unit, which is uh, all over the world now, also dorsal cord stimulator. Altogether, between the two of us at this point, there is uh, about 17 patents. There's over 37 books now, including the three that are out. And there is another one that is in the, in the works, uh, including Restoring Common Sense, lots of others, including how to achieve total and complete health without the influence of the pharmaceutical industry. 
Okay. So you're right there. You said how to achieve total and complete health without the influence of the pharmaceutical industry. That's right. So it brings me to like, what is your stance on medication? You joined Dr. Sheely. Mm. You look at the body through a wholeness perspective. Yes. So what is your stance on medication short-term and long-term? I'm not going to say that medicine is bad. I'm not going to say that the healthcare system is bad. There's a lot of smart, good people, and I have a lot of colleagues who are absolutely wonderful, amazing. My primary work, I started out as a family medicine doctor, uh, and I gave it a go. And what I discovered, even before I realized, well, what the situation was, I was turned off almost immediately. Within less than a half a year, I made a decision, I am not going to practice that kind of so-called preventive medicine. There was nothing preventive about it. Now, let me describe the journey through the conventional, and if this sounds familiar, please let me know. So this is how it kind of generally goes. You've got a person who comes into the doctor. Uh, they Let's say they have a problem. And let's take something as simple as a uh, reflux, GERD, which a lot of people don't pay attention to. I can give multiple examples. I can talk about diabetes. I can talk about chronic pain. I can talk about stress uh, management. I can talk about anxiety, depression. I can talk about every single disease under the sun. And what happens uh, is that you arrive at the doctor's office. You literally have five minutes or less with a physician, and especially under the current Medicare insurance system. And here there is a reason for that, because we are driven to perform. We are driven as a physician, as doctors, as providers. There is a timeline. It's not about the human anymore. It's about the visit. And it's about how much credit do you get for the visit, in other words, in terms of the units and so on and so forth. But it comes down to financial and it comes down to the fact, and I'm going to just say straight out, the pharmaceutical industry flat out controls. And if you think of a mafia, if you think of a of a protection racket, so to speak, that's exactly what is going on in the system. I'm just going to speak as direct here as I, as I can be. Back in medical school, I was trained, I was literally trained and brainwashed into uh, knowing and believing that the answer to everything, absolutely everything, is drugs. As a matter of fact, I've had to take uh, my boards, you have to take your your medical boards every once in a while. And when I was going through the preparation, I realized I would flunk that test in in a heartbeat. The reason being is, I'll give you an example of a question. A person has diabetes, hypertension, so on and so forth, and they give you this case scenario. What is the first thing that you should try? Now, they will say lifestyle. That's the wrong answer on the conventional means. Why? Because we're taught, we are brainwashed, we're browbeaten into the fact that people don't do lifestyle, and we shouldn't even bother with the lifestyle. That's the foundation. I'll, I'll, I'll talk about the entire holistic process, which is the answer to this entire situation and the crisis and to the conversation that we're having. Now, second thing. Stress, you know, in terms of stress and otherwise management, uh, it's not even recognized. Uh, the conventional system has no way of dealing with stress. And when a person has anxiety, depression, stress-related factors, which Dr. Cellier, by the way, back in the, well, back in the 30s and 40s, has done tremendous work with research of thousands of people, demonstrated without a question, very, very clearly, that... Uh, Literally, 95% of everything that happens to people from mental health, anxiety, depression, psychotic breakdowns, everything otherwise, but also physical, acute uh, medical issues. So you're saying, and I just want to sum this up kind of as you go. Yes. You're saying lifestyle, conventional, not recognized. Not recognized. Conventional, not not recognized. So to tie this up. Nutrition, not recognized. We know nothing about nutrition. I got maybe less than an hour at, uh, well, of education on what it means to be healthy. My own journey, the only reason that I actually know about the stuff I care about it is, first of all, I, I grew up and I was raised in former Soviet, Russia. Uh, well, it's one of the republics, not Russia, Russia. It was just the 17 republics that used to, be, used to be called Russia. It's called Belarus. My grandmother was a pediatric cardiologist. My uncle was a physician. My mom was a nurse. And uh, in the generations before, there were people in, in the field. So basically, you could say that I, it's in my genetics, but it's, it's something that I grew up with. And I saw what people can do. I saw what my, uh, my family, who was in the healthcare field, can do with very limited resources. 
and uh, with a system that was basically designed to support the, the very powerful and the rich who had everything. And then there was the rest of the population who had nothing. The concept of a matrix is an, it's a structure. It's something that is artificially created. Like, for example, in a movie, uh, a computer simulation or a social si simulation, teaching, brainwashing by society, by culture, by media that we are less than we, who, who we are, that we need, we depend and we rely on, on, on things like drugs and pharmaceuticals, and that we are the, alone of ourselves are inadequate as human beings, and we must depend on external sources. That's what the, all the commercials are about. This is what the pharmaceutical industry is about. And that's what the medical education is all about. So I want to circle, and I am tracking with you. I want to circle back to that original question. And I'm getting that your stance is no. <laughs> like, your stance is I don't stand with medication. What is your stance on medication? It, long term and short term? Is it like a <laughs> yeah. hard no? No, uh, actually, uh, the answer there is it depends. And that's not just a, a BS answer. To get away from the question, the answer is it depends on several factors. And the number one thing is anytime you're talking about acute, for example, I work emergency room, I see a person with a heart attack, stroke, broken leg, so on and so forth. And they just worked the weekend in the emergency room. So I came from a whole bunch of interesting things. There was actually a death in the emergency room ER. And we threw a lot of drugs, uh, you know, uh, to support the cardiovascular. In general, those drugs work. That's acute. The med medication acutely for the pain, uh, acutely for the conditions from the emergency room and the like, uh, that's fantastic. That is fantastic. That is the part of the system that we should embrace. That is a part of the system that we should honor because there's a lot of resources. If a person is having a heart attack, chest pain or abdominal pain, get to the emergency room, get checked out. If you need something, if you're having a bleeding ulcer, you need stomach medications. But when it gets to a chronic condition, and when I say chronic, technically six months, but that's that, that's also um, BS. When I say the word BS, I just want to clarify what I'm saying. I'm not saying a bad word. Uh, there's a friend of mine that has a saying, belief system, BS. There's a belief system, a BS. Right now, conventionally, chronic is defined for uh, six months or longer. Six months or more. That's a belief system that technically shouldn't exist. Should not exist. Here's why. By three months of a condition, if it's not getting better, six weeks to, to, to three, uh, well, three months, let's say, if things are not getting better or they're getting worse, Einstein had a really wonderful saying, definition of insanity, doing the same thing, expecting a different result. So you're sitting here talking to so many listeners who are thinking, I am on four drugs. I don't know how to get off. And they're scared or, or maybe just used to the norm on how this has made their bodies feel for the better, for the numbing, for the worse, for whatever, whatever that is. There is a relationship there. So speak to the listeners with this um, side of, a, of hope. There is always hope. And by the way, four medications is nothing from where I come from, you know, like what, what in our practice. I've taken the, uh, we're working on taking a person off 30 medications. 30. 30 drugs. And about uh, six of them are antidepressants by piled one on top of the other. And what happens then, I'll, let me just paint the picture. Let me just kind of go through a typical story. So we started with the stomach medicine, reflux. The easiest thing about, you know, the, the most the thing that makes sense, and I'll, I'll go through the alternative, but this is what happens if you enter the conventional system with, say, let's say reflux, heartburn. So first of all, you'll get put on a proton pump inhibitor or some yep. kind of a stomach a blocking, PPI, stomach blocking med, something of that nature. Now, Seems innocent enough. If you speak with a doctor, oh, yeah, it's nothing. We use it all the time. Now, that medicine does have use, but only in the acute setting. When you're talking basically it's weeks and months and so on and so forth, if you truly understand the physiology and biology of the body, which we truly don't because the education is based on the pharmaceuticals. And if it's anything but pharmaceuticals, I almost got kicked out of the training several times because I questioned the status quo. That's when I learned not to ask questions. And that's what we're asking people to do. Question the status quo. Question the system that is saying 30 medications is okay. Question the status quo. 
All right. So you have someone that's on a GERD medication, a PPI, trying to inhibit the acid production. Now, what happens is nobody ends up taking a person off of that. And in the meantime, what are you doing to the body? What are you doing to the body with those chemicals and synthetics? Uh, and again, I'm not saying there's not a use for it, but I, I know people for years, decades, uh, they're on their dying bed and, and they have that. You are blocking the absorption of not only the proteins uh, that are broken down and digested in the stomach, but as you move, move on down, you're not able to make use of the fats and lipids, leading to the, all sorts of GI issues as all of this junk now, which used, used to be food. And by the way, most food is junk, by the way, I'll just say it that way. And if you put junk in your body, garbage in, garbage out. That's just as simple as that. Guys, listen to previous episodes on the SAD diet, standard American diet. We don't <laughs> have to go there. We've talked about it. It is, God bless. It yeah. is something we're working through. But yes, okay. So the implications of the PPI medications, I assume, lead to other medications. Now, as a side effect of that now, because you're not making naturally and normally, according to the blueprint, I'm going to talk about the blueprint of the human body because there is a blueprint for health. Nobody in medicine or very few people are care or concerned about what is normal and what is healthy. And if you don't understand what is normal and what is healthy, and all you understand is the illness and pathology and how to fix it with synthetics, you are in the wrong forest. And you can, you can see where that goes just as a concept. But the, just the short of it, and this can be a very long conversation, a person starts out on a protein pop inhibitor, and now they cannot make the enzymes, they cannot make the, the hormones that are necessary for body maintenance. Next thing you know, their testosterone, estrogen, progesterone is off, uh, is off, off kilter, thyroid. Now then they get on another medicine, another medicine, another medicine. And uh, before you know it, you're taking medicines for side effects of other medicines and you're adding uh, on and pile stocking, so to speak, blood pressure medicines. If, it does, if it's not working, again, come back to the same concept. Einstein definition of insanity. Same thing over and over, expecting a different result. If a person is already on say four or five blood pressure drugs or number of diabetes drugs, and they're going, getting worse. It's not getting better. Something is wrong. So where do you start there? So uh, the idea is you have to step out of that box. There's a lot that a person can do simply by looking outside of the box, because that's how my family, family practiced medicine. They were in the system, but they were having the best results among other pro practitioners. My grandmother became the head of the cardiology clinic, and nobody knew how she did the miracles that she did. Now I know. She was working with a holistic approach, and this is what I picked up early in my childhood. So now I know where that's coming from, maybe in a different form. But uh, what is holism? The holism is a completely different system. It's a foundation. It's a completely different concept, which is completely foreign and completely unknown uh, and scary to most people that I meet. Why? Because we have a status quo. We know what is system. We know what is not system. And we know what's okay. And we know what's not okay. And further, when you go to the doctor, the white coat, that like, I'm not wearing a white coat, and I'm not saying anything about doctors, but we are brainwashed as a society. We are brainwashed. And when you speak with a doctor and say, can I get off this medication? Uh, the answer is no, you cannot, because we're not trained in this. But we, instead of saying, well, my, my biggest uh, pet peeve is if I don't know something, I'm going to say, I don't know. And I'm going to find uh, find answers. I'm going to ask for help, but I'm going to acknowledge what I don't know so that I can learn and I can do it right. In our medical society, it's a taboo to say, I don't know. So when, when you ask a doctor something, they have nothing about, no, no information, no knowledge, no, no concept. Someone sits and asks you, I want to get off. Let's just say 30 is extreme. Maybe one, right? When you're looking at the bell curve, one prescription drug is slim. It's not, you know, it's not as extreme as 30. And then a lot of people are up here on the tip of the bell curve at like four to seven. So that person on seven drugs comes to you and says, I want to get off. You have this concept of holism, but you're going to walk with them. How, where does that relationship start? Let me outline for the, the steps. Okay. First, you have to realize and acknowledge that the physical is, is, is a reality. I have two arms, I have two legs, I have organ, you know, my, my organs. And again, it's a, some things are either okay or not okay, working or not working. But there's a much bigger factor behind the physical, beyond the physical. And this is, this is a, the whole concept of holism. What controls the physical? What controls my physical health, my habits, my everything else? It's the control center right here. 
Uh, and nobody talks about that. If you have a if uh, the best the medicine can do is send you to psychiatry and get you on antidepressants, which cause even more troubles, and they're worthless, frankly speaking. If you look at again the research behind and the true research, the numbers are staggeringly terrible. But you're not going to see that. So this is the first place that I, I ask people: if this is the control center, who is in control of the control center? Is it the training? Is it the brainwashing? Is it is it the society, the family, the the system? Who do you trust? Because who you trust is a very key factor to what's going to happen. If you trust every white coat, so to speak, and, I, and please don't get me wrong, I, I have a lot of respect for my colleagues, but if you trust every white coat without listening to your gut and without using common sense, we actually have a book out called Common Sense, Recovering Common Sense, uh, which talks about many different things. The truth of the matter is the media, the government, the you know, all sorts of outside external factors are in control of our minds. We believe uh, a lot of the things that we see, and a lot of it is matrix, false, uh, not true, and completely separated from the reality of the blueprint of the human being. What else on the, in the blueprint of the human being? Uh, now, there's ways to work with a brain, with a mind, without putting artificial chemicals like antidepressants and other things. So in I'm going to pause you here to help the listeners track with this. There's the body. There's the brain. And now we're talking about the extension of the blueprint of our bodies and how to work with that without these synthetics. The best example I, I usually give is this. Uh, this is what people, this is what we do. And then I'll get to the best part of the whole thing of the holism, because this is what's been missing for hundreds of years. And this is what Dr. Shealy, my, my, the founding father of holistic medicine and myself, I'm following in his footsteps. This is why we're so passionate about this idea and the concept and the outcomes that we're having. This is why it's so powerful. Uh, but it's easier to think about cars or houses. Let's say you have a nice car. I like Porsches, you know, I mean, for some reason I've had one, you know, I got one when I was diagnosed with colon cancer back in when I was 32 years of age and I was told I would be dead. So um, the short of it, I not only switched entirely my, put the, put the light on uh, in terms of my idea. I came back to where my grandpa, my grandmother has taught me and uh, it was, okay, if I'm going to be dead in two years, let me learn something new because the system is killing me. And uh, uh, that was the beginning. There's been many other crises in my personal crisis that have helped me understand the humanity and the body and the mind and everything else. Very powerful stuff. Uh, if you have a nice car, if you have a Porsche or whatever else you like, that Porsche is designed to for, for certain for, for in certain blueprint. There's a certain thing that you need to do. You, you're supposed to take care of the, the certain fluids. You're supposed to put in the right uh, the right kind of fuel. Uh, if you don't do that, you can have the best car in the world. It's going to go bad in very shortly. Now, it's going to still keep going for a while. But this is exactly why most people are in the place of a chronic illness, multiple meds, and feeling crappy, despite all that. Because we're not following the blueprint of what the humanity should be. Now, um, that blueprint, uh, and this is my firm belief and knowledge, because I've had several near-death experiences as well, including out-of-body and a lot of other things that what I've seen and what I understood, and I can't even put it into words. I just like, I'll, I'll do my best. Spirit, soul, mind, body. We are, I'm a spirit, spiritual being. I'm, you know, everything is energy. I am a soul. I'm an individual expression coming into, through the control center, into a physical existence. Okay. So we're talking about spirit, soul, mind, body. How does that wrap into someone who's so disconnected from that? You get there slowly right? Like you sit in a warm bath and it heats up one degree at a time. And before you know it, you're boiled. So there's so many people walking around out here that are on seven drugs and they didn't intentionally ask for this. They just got one side effect, one side effect, and we're told to do this. And that's called a cocktail guys, a cocktail of medications. And if you're on a cocktail and you're listening to this, or you know, somebody just what I need you to hear is that there are different ways and different options to explore and open your brain, step out of that box that Dr. Soren is talking about. So when you pull together the blueprint of the body and you're talking to someone about that, how do you bring them off those drugs? This is what holism is all about. This is the holistic approach. This is the blueprint. It's basically... And now, I'm going to start with a basic statement. Now, I've had a near-death out-of-body experiences. I don't tell people what to believe. I don't to tell people how to believe this is not, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not a minister per se. Well, I am a minister in a way as well, uh, but I have another several degrees. But uh, 
here I'm speaking as a doctor and speaking as a doctor, I'm just going to tell you, if you, if a person is only focused on the physical, on the first layer, the ground layer, the arms, the legs, the organs, the, how I'm feeling pain, what my body is, you know, is, is going through. If you are only seeing that, and that's what, the, and, the, and that's where the healthcare system is, the sick care system is, you are missing everything else. And this is when you become identified. That, that's when people identify with, I am a diabetic. I am diabetes. I am blood pressure. I am pain. I am this. That statement is huge. That statement is huge. You guys, I want you to hear Dr. Soren when he says, if you just focus on the physical, if you just focus on how you connect with this label that you've been given on your physical body, it's going to be really hard to get your body going in the right direction of balance without the support of these synthetics. Is that what you're saying? That's exactly it. And for people who are not willing, I'm going to be real hard line here on this, to be proactive and to take responsibility. That's another big word. Responsibility breaks down into responsibility, ability to respond. We all have that from birth. We give it up. It's not that it's taken away. We give it up. We, we throw it away, just like freedom and uh, lots of other things. We don't value that. Now, I think the word value is interesting because I don't think people, we talked about programming people are programmed to think that this is the right way and that they're doing right by their bodies. And so listeners out there, I'm here with you. I'm learning as we go in this. And there is a way to take that responsibility back. You may have been told something, but open your eyes, open the box and step out of it and try a different way. We'd love to walk with you here at email us info at the healing reset.com. I would love to walk with you on this journey, help you find a physician in your neighborhood, like Dr. Soren, who's willing to say, hey, you're more than just the physical. Let's talk about where your mind's at. Let's talk about how you're viewing your relationship to this diagnosis. Perfect. Perfect. And it gets a little deeper than that. Uh, through my uh, through some of my adventures and uh, near death, I'm, I've I've been given a cer- certain gifts or certain you know certain things that are well. We've, we've always we all have that. You know, we just yeah, you just totally. discover things. Yeah, uh, one of the things is the capacity to look beyond the thing into a pattern, into the root cause. Where is the thing coming from? What is causing it? And it's the patterns that. But let let me bring another concept. We have so many concepts here on this amazing broadcast. Here's the present. Here now. Here's the past. This is all the things that we have done that leading up to where we are. Unfortunately, what people do from the past is that they continue in the same pattern. And when you continue in the same pattern, you do the same thing, you get the same outcome. Simple. That's what happens. Now, that's why people end up with worsening uh, snowball effect, uh, more meds, more things. And the system is not going to fix it for you. The system is going to put you on more drugs. So if you're going to the to your doctor, your specialist, and you want to get off drugs, but you keep getting more, think about it. Look at the pattern of what's happening there. If it ain't serving, think about it. Consider. Now, the future or the outcomes is a very interesting thing because a lot of people are anxious and concerned about the future and the fear-based model. If you're truly in the present and optimizing each and every moment, and I'll talk about lifestyle, I'll talk about supplements, I'll talk about stress management, I'll talk about all, there's electromagnetic devices, there's all sorts of ways to optimize, to bring back the normal in the human body. And each of those is a, is a huge topic in itself. But again, I, we can give a general big, a big picture and outline. Once you have the foundation of health, what is the foundation of health? Let's talk about it. Lifestyle, nutrition. What kind of stuff are you putting in your body? Exercise, movement, we are meant to move. Another blueprint. I talked to a chiropractor on this show that said motion is lotion. An inch is a cinch. So start slow. If you're not someone who is exercising right now, you haven't exercised in years, whatever that looks like, an inch is a cinch. Start slow, go out for a walk, get outside in the sun. Brilliant. Do something. Exactly. But that's in the present. So we're talking on that timeline in... What Dr. Soren is telling us is that like you must live in this present moment and control these present controllables. Be here now. Ram Das, uh, one of my favorite authors, has a you know has a book. Be here now. This is where the power is. If you're in the past, you're living the past patterns. If those patterns are not serving you, guess what? You're not doing yourself a favor. If you're living in the future, you're afraid or anticipating. Guess what? 
you're forgetting the present moment and you're continuing the previous patterns because you're not present. So that's the big picture. So one of the things that I do is I don't just work with the medicines. I don't want just work with the details of how to get off medicine and how soon and what, how to, how to cut it back and what I work with optimizing the, the, the person not just physically, mentally, emotionally, through the work with the control center, the mind, the brain, uh, how we perceive what we do, but also realizing that we are more than the patterns of the physical that we have been. We are more than the patterns of the mental and emotional. For example, chronic pain and uh, depression work together or ang- and anxiety. Or chronic medical illnesses, they, they, that's all a package. And I can basically, when I, when I look at a person, I see patterns, I see packages of how they're three or four or five medical chronic conditions came around to be. And it's very clear and it's very simple. And it all has to do with a lack of the basics and doing the wrong things. Yeah. Doing the wrong things, doing the wrong patterns. Let me throw out a couple of disease states out there. And I just want you to give a yay or nay on um, medications as a must. Of course. Autoimmunity. No. Hypertension. No. Cholesterol. Not necessary. Not necessary. Um, thyroid. Not necessary. To a large degree. Thyroid is a, is, is a slightly different animal, but if you optimize the rest of the body, the hormonal system will generally take care of itself. Neurodegenerative diseases. Oh, huge category. Absolutely, generally not necessary for the most part. What am I missing? Mental illness. 100% not necessary. What am I missing? Well, you can, we can add everything else. Okay. Okay. So this is a lot of information, but to break it down super simply to someone out there, they come to you. I want to get off this drug. We're addressing the presence. We're addressing the blueprint. And that's the recipe. I mean, that makes it sound very simple, but that's the recipe for success. That's when you know someone's willing to make that change. Is that what I'm hearing? Exactly. I'll go as far as to say the truth is simple. The matrix, the lies is complicated and very confusing. If you're in a place where you're confused, you're in the wrong place. Now, tell me this. Can someone find the answers that we're talking about in conventional medicine today? Do you have hope for conventional medicine to catch up to this root cause look at a holistic body? Not the way it is. I believe the system is dismantling itself. Well, I'm an emergency room doc. Every other weekend I work in the, in the ER and uh, uh, I have a lot of colleagues that I stay in touch with. I have a lot of people that I communicate from my office and you know, in terms of specialists. Everyone is realizing that the system is crumbling, falling down. Here's a big concept. Let's think about this. With the supply and demand and all the, all the procedures and policies that are basically idiotic. Let's put it this way. It's not the anything but the policies and the human mismanagement that is shutting down our system. That is why people cannot get into specialists. That's why surgeries are being uh, delayed. That's why even, you know, we had a person die literally in the emergency room of appendix from the appendix, uh, being on antibiotics for five days, unable to transfer to a place that has surgery. And we're not equipped in our hospital to do surgery. And that's an unnecessary death and complication and that's common. That's what's happening in our society. So you cannot, you do not have the luxury of depending and relying on specialists and the conventional. Well, I mean, if you can get in, that's great. But uh, the the key is you've got to work on the concept of health, wellness, and the foundation. You don't keep it simple. Things get complicated. Complicated things are falling down. That's what's happening now. Break patterns, health, wellness. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. Okay, Doc. Let's jump to. Three things that someone listening doesn't have to do with medication, just in general. Someone walks out their door tomorrow morning. What three things can they change, add into their world for better health? Let's start with the basics. I'm going to start with the foundation. The, you know, if you're building a house, you've got to have a foundation. Yeah. Nutrition, primarily veggies, some protein, a good amount of protein, at least one milligram per kilogram uh, for of, uh, of body weight uh, if you're in pounds divided by let's say by two and, you know, that 2.2, I should say. And then, you know, you'll, uh, you'll have the, the amount of grams of protein and then cut out the processed, the sugar, the uh, starches and things of that nature. Not because I have a problem with pasta or pizza. I love pizza. I mean, I used to love it. We used to travel, you know, Italy, other places. 
nothing wrong with pizza in Italy, but the pizza here is full of Roundup poisons. We're literally poisoning our system, then wondering why we're getting inflammation, metabolic diseases, which go in, in combinations, diabetes, uh, hypertension, cholesterol, generally all three come together. Why? Because we're messing up the blueprint. Okay. So foundations, your number one, what's your number? Foundations. Three? Uh, number two is stress management. We talked about the fact that 95% and the Dr. Sellier did the work in 1930s and 40s, which is actually a foundation for Dr. Shilly, my medical partner, founder of holistic medicine, of this the, the biogenics, uh, a PhD project uh, that he spent a number of years on, putting together from before the medicine, medications and pharmaceuticals took over the world, the entire world. When people used to work with the mind, when people used to work with biofeedback, with learning and doing things that are natural for the body and, and staying away from what is not natural. And so there's a lot of techniques and mental and emotional tools, over 68 various exercises now on physical level, on mental and emotional, like, for example, tolerance, forgiveness, acceptance. How many people struggle with that? There's other things. Uh, for example, I'll give you a quick uh, little uh, exercise or summary of an exercise. And it's all set to the, uh, to the frequencies and uh, certain things that are, well, conducive to your brain health and wellness. So, you know, designed and processed and research and all that stuff. But the idea is, and this is an exercise. So you would you just imagine, and if we had more time, and I'd love to explore more of that, you're sitting down, you're relaxing, taking a deep breath, Scanning your entire body, scanning your, your mind for thoughts, feelings, emotions, becoming aware in this present moment. Where am I? What's going on? Am I okay? Is, uh, if I'm not okay, can I fix it? Do I need to just kind of let it go? And then the several concepts are as follows. I have a physical body and I am more than my physical body. I'm not denying that I have a physical body. I'm not denying that I may have certain issues or physical concerns, but I am more than that. And I'm more than that. I have a mind, feelings, and emotions. In other words, it's a control center, but this is not the end all. How do I change the patterns of the mind and therefore the patterns of the physical and the lifestyle and everything else? By realizing that I am a spiritual being, I am a free soul, and I, am a, I can decide and optimize my life here on earth because we didn't come here for, to, to be miserable. We didn't come here to be sick. We didn't come here to be tired. We didn't come here to break down and die, uh, you know, before our time. We didn't come here for to be inflamed and on multiple drugs supporting the pharmaceutical industry and their profits. That's not what we're here for. Mm -hmm. What's number three? Okay, so we talked about the, uh, the lifestyle. Uh, I'm going to say the practical stuff would be the supplements. And uh, you've got to have the basic foundations. The food, the soil, uh, everything in our society is artificial, GMO-based. It's rare to find good quality food and good quality products. And uh, when you do, when you do, you still need certain supplementation, uh, including a good B-complex. For example, Dr. Shilly developed something called Essentials, which is a B-complex with a, with a multivitamin. You take two of those a day that gives you plenty of uh, energy for the cell. Then you have another foundational or basic uh, supplement, for example, um, something called youth formula. Youth formula contains vitamin C, but combines with something called MSM. And I can go into a lot more detail on that. The combination does something incredible. It raises DHEA, dehydroandrogenase. It's the anti-stress wellness hormone located in the adrenals. And that's what balances the stress and the effect of stress, which is killing us. Vitamin D3. Uh, now, uh, a lot of people prescribe D2, it's worthless. Uh, again, I, I've, I have no faith in the system when it comes to vitamins and, uh, and, and otherwise. And if you're deficient in vitamin D, guess what? You're deficient in everything else. So that's what it is. And that means your body is not functioning at the level that you, you're, you're capable of, that you are meant. It's like a sports car, a Porsche with five of the cylinders unplugged. It's not going to do well. It'll, it'll still go, but it's, it's not going to do well. Next thing is magnesium. A topical magnesium, and that's the basic package for a healthy person who wants to stay healthy. Now, if you're sick, we have protocols that have worked for, for decades for blood pressure, for mental health, for diabetes, for cholesterol, for brain health, you name it, for pain. Dr. Soren is a wealth of knowledge. Today, we are just trying to provide a little glimpse of what it could be to peel off some of those monthly medications and get your body back into balance because we believe in you. 
something I tell myself constantly when I'm looking at healing my own thyroid. So I'm on this journey with you. Email us at the info at thehealingreset.com with your stories. Let us walk beside you on this. Dr. Soren, thank you so much for being here today. We just appreciate this conversation. It went a little bit outside of where I expected it to go. And I loved it because <laughs> we are, we're, we're more than the physical. And that is something yes. that a lot of times we're just addressing our bodies and we're more yes. than just our bodies. All right, guys, listeners, thanks for joining us. This podcast is for informational purposes only. Statements and views expressed in this podcast are not medical advice and have not been evaluated by the FDA. Opinions of guests are their own, and this podcast does not endorse nor accept responsibility for statements made by guests.